welcome to Geeking Poetic Podcast. Where what will go wrong, will go wrong. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Geeking Poetic Podcast channel, and uh, I'm one of your hosts, Larry Roberts. I'm Megan Guest. I'm Vito Marchese. And you're joining us for our very first film review. And uh, the film that we are going to be talking about tonight is uh, an amazing movie, I thought. Yeah, yeah overall, pretty damn incredible. overall pretty incredible, amazing movie called Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> so first and foremost, uh, you know, Let's tell everybody what what was what was your initial thoughts about this? I mean, what were you expecting going into the movie? So I haven't seen all of the movies leading up to this, so I didn't really know what was going to happen. Right. Um, I don't know that much about Thanos, but I was expecting some badass mashup with all these different superheroes combining powers to fight this dude, and that's exactly what we got. I mean, there was some yeah, really badass yeah. shit going on. <laughs> yeah. And what about you? Um, again, like you, I haven't seen all the movies, and I'm not... The comic book reader, so I don't know what could have happened. But the people I thought were going to die did not die. Well, first of all, before I even get into my thoughts, we ought to let everybody know, since you just mentioned dying, this is not... <laughs> This is not a spoiler-free review. This There's going to be just tons and tons of spoilers throughout this whole thing. Yeah, we probably should have started with that. Yeah, that's okay. We didn't give away too much. At this point, I think most people out if there... If you're watching this, you probably have seen it, or you probably know that people die. Yeah, you know? I you, don't think they ever... Yeah, I don't think they ever made it like I mean, a that secret. many superheroes, you have to know somebody's going to die. Yeah. Something's exactly. got to happen bad. Or else what's the point of a movie? Yeah. Right. So, but from here on out... If you haven't seen the movie and you don't like spoilers, then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Pause this vi uh, video, go watch the movie, and then come back and watch the rest of it. We'll stay here right here. We'll yeah. wait for you. We'll be here. All right, so now we wait. I Are guess we good? Yeah, yeah, no, fuck them. Let's okay. go. Yeah. All right, we're going. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. don't take that long to pause. But anyway... <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, out of the three of us, I have the deepest... Uh, background knowledge of all the comic books, especially Marvel. And uh, I saw it, it wasn't a big surprise for me what ended up happening in this movie ultimately, although it doesn't, just like all the other Marvel movies, it doesn't follow the comic books exactly. I mean, but, th but there's enough stuff in there that you could kind of figure out where they're going to generally head. Hell. Yeah. So I, I, I was very pleasantly surprised with how well they tied all these movies together. I mean, I I really was skeptical. I and, and that's the thing. I'm gonna start it off by saying, uh, I loved this movie. Overall, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was great. There, there was a few things that we'll get into that I, I I had some questions about, but overall, I really loved this movie. And I must say, as much of a Marvel fanboy as I am, I wasn't expecting to love this movie. I was very skeptical. I thought, really? yeah, I, I just, I didn't see how they were going to tie essentially 10 years worth of movies that were all over the place and having that many characters and, and, you know, huge personalities. That's a tall order, man. Uh, yeah. It's, how yeah. are they going to balance that out? I mean, we'd already seen it to some degree, you know, done in the previous Avengers movies. And I felt like say the previous Avengers movie, Age of Ultron, I enjoyed that movie, but I thought that at times that script and, and everything sort of suffered a little bit from the over, uh, uh, you know, surplus of these, like I said. There's so much to put in and tie in that you Right, got. yeah, it, it just, it, at times it, I just didn't feel like it translated that well. Mm -hmm. uh, by contrast, I think when we got to the next big crossover one, which was Captain America's Civil War, I felt like that one was a little bit better. But at the same time, the battle in Civil War and the whole crossover part of it was actually a pretty brief amount of the yeah. film. So it, this was literally that 
the, the uh, rather Avengers Infinity War was literally that dragged out for almost three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I was just I just really didn't know how they were going to do it. And I think they pulled it off amazingly. And at no point I felt the movie dragged where I was like, Jesus, we got two hours drag. left. Yeah, no. I mean. <laughs> too much to cram in there, too many superheroes. Yeah, exactly. It, it didn't drag at all. And yeah, the pacing was good, I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah the pacing was really good. But I Once mean, it got started. Yeah. yeah. So just, yeah, to, to finish off my thought on that, I, as before anybody automatically assumes that I, you know, was just going to love this movie unconditionally. Not at all. I, I I really expected to come out of there bitching because, <laughs> well, you know. Which Larry does a lot. I do, I do. I do a lot. Do that. <laughs> oh, Larry. Fuck y'all. <laughs> all right. No, I know, but I mean that's I know I am, but you know, I, if like if we would have done a review, if we would have been around doing a review of the Last Jedi, or things like that, I just a lot of movies have been letting me down lately. Um, I, they just aren't living up to the hype. And I know I've seen a lot of uh, people already complaining online saying that they felt that Infinity War didn't live up to the hype for them. I completely disagree. I, I, I was so happy with this movie. And let me also preface uh, the rest of my review by saying this. I read a lot of the spoilers before I went and saw the Way movie. He doesn't do that either. <laughs> I'm impatient. I can't... I, I, I need to fucking know what I'm in, <laughs> what I've got in ahead of me, you know. I don't like surprises. Some surprises I like, but like I said, I was already I, because I. <laughs> fair enough. Okay, I read the spoilers because I was expecting to have a lot of gripes about this movie, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna read the spoilers and. I didn't read all of them, but a lot of them. And I'm going to read a bunch of the spoilers, so I already know, you know, so I'm not going to be sitting there fidgeting in my seat, aggravated. And complete opposite. I read the spoilers and went, oh. Can't wait to see this. Wow, I'm, I'm actually really interested to see how they're going to pull this off, you know. <laughs> and uh, it didn't disappoint. And, 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 and I'll say this, reading the spoilers didn't, change my emotional reaction to the film either which that really surprised me because i already knew what was going to happen i already knew about like well, i guess we could say it because we already told you the spoilers, spoilers. about all the deaths because <laughs> there's a fuck ton of them Just half the universe half literally of the universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody you know everybody suddenly turns into uh dust in the wind like yeah. fucking kansas and shit <laughs> um and uh it totally affected me. As a matter of fact, I went and saw the movie twice. Ooh. I saw it the very next day after we did. Um, I went and saw it again, and it affected me as much or, oddly enough, even more. And I, I don't know why. I, 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 you would have thought that the blow would have been softened by having already had read what was going to happen and then seeing the movie with you guys. But, but did you take in more the second time? Yes. You may have missed the first yes, time? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, I, I, because I had already seen it, I was able to just really pay attention to other things. Analyze it yeah, more. analyze it a little more, think more about things, think about, oh, this scene's coming up, oh yeah, th th there's good stuff. And, and I focused on different characters and background things or just little stuff. And so, yeah, that's the other thing. I. For me personally, this was definitely a recommended see it more than once film, I, I think, because there's so much that happens. Yeah, there is. So. It's a long ass movie. <laughs> it is a long movie, but, uh, but uh, as you said, I don't feel like there's any parts where I'm like, oh, come on, this is dragging yeah, out. Yeah, I was not checking my phone or my watch to see like, dude, we got an hour left or whatever. I mean, no. it pretty much blew by, yeah, I thought. Right. You know. Exactly. <laughs> But also, we totally need to mention that, wow, what a task it was just getting <laughs> oh to see this yeah. movie. We have footage, I think we have footage, we right? Yeah, yeah, we got footage of what happened when we tried to go and do our first movie <laughs> review <laughs> and uh, the, the somewhat crazy events surrounding it. Um, we That's almost, a first for me. I never had that. Yeah, yeah me either. So. Yeah, we had to be, as you'll see, uh, just as we were getting our uh, chicken fingers and drinks, <laughs> they suddenly evacuated the theater because there was crazy uh, 
storms coming in. At first, I did not think it was a storm fire drill that they yeah. said. Yeah, well, that yeah. was the thing. So they come up to us. We're standing there. All these alarms go off. The lights are flashing, and we're it like, was, "Okay, it didn't even start with that." I saw the people from the movie theater come oh, back in. They're like, "I'm calling security." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, see, yeah, I missed that. Yeah, I right, so I was over paying attention to that. You were all like, "I'll fo focused on chicken fingers." And shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they look good, man. <laughs> they were still fine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so they came in and was like, I'm calling security. Next thing I know, all the lights start going off. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, and I was. And they're like, oh, it's a fire drill. Yeah, they go, I was like, uh, you are fucking full of <laughs> yeah. shit right now. Like, first of all, we should say, what theater has a fire drill at, at what was what, it like? 10 o'clock at night? It was like nine yeah, quarter to nine. At and night. one of the dudes said, he's at the shop and save. And I was like, what do you mean he's at the shop and save? And I was like, oh, oh wait a minute. That. I think we might be in trouble here. But then it wasn't anything like a, you know, something bad like that. As far but, as we know, yeah. unless they just took the motherfucker out. It's going to well, be a global conspiracy. I swear cons when they heard this out there. that it was smoky in the mall. Oh. I was well, like, oh, is it kind of on fire and they saw smoke? Oh. I can believe the that. The mall like, is fire on drill. fire. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grab no <laughs> shoes or nothing. <laughs> I ran for my life. <laughs> No, actually. So then we stood. No. So then we actually stood out outside the place, hoping we weren't going to get rained on, eating our hot dogs and drinks and stuff. We made Vito go back in and get a drink. We lost because <laughs> they yeah, both right. left their seven dollar drinks on the counter. That's right. I totally forgot. Yeah, we don't even know. There could be a shooter in there. Mall could be like burning down or something like that. We were we're standing out there. We're like, oh fuck, dude. We don't have our drinks. Vito, go on in there. <laughs> he did. He did. He got him for us, man. It was great. But take one for the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all right. I mean, so. there was a, literally a ton of people just staying around, not doing anything. And I was like, all right, I think I'm going to be pretty safe. There was a, like a crowd of people here. I'll just duck behind somebody if something happens. You know, <laughs> you're going to duck behind some people. <laughs> ain't ducking behind you. <laughs> oh man. We're here at Golf Mill, AMC Theater, doing our first review, and. We didn't even get as far as getting into the theater because there's some kind of alarm thing going on. I, I, we don't, so I'm eating my hot dog outside the mall. At least it's not raining at the moment. No, just it's wait. Still, it is lightning. Yeah, there's, I'm yeah. struck by lightning. This is like the ultimate gag being played on us. <laughs> Hopefully everything's okay. Somebody said it was a fire drill. I'm skeptical. I don't believe that for Yeah, I'm skeptical No, they said they were called security, but yeah. it's not a fire drill. Well, well, no, no, but we ran out without our drinks, so we had to run back in. <laughs> we never got our chicken tenders, man. <laughs> oh, no? No. <laughs> we never did. We're going to have to go back for oh, chicken geez. tenders. We were waiting on our food and got kicked out. <laughs> We weren't even doing anything yet. Yeah, I thought we were, we were like, being good. <laughs> the alarm started going off. I totally thought it was because we were filming in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> and they were going to be like, get out. <laughs> we're supposed to be watching our movie right now. Instead, there's some kind of crazy alarm going off. <laughs> Only us. Only us. <laughs> First review. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting with a bang. <laughs> a beep. Beep, beep, beep. But yeah, as you saw the footage there and everything, that, uh, yeah, we finally, they finally started the movie, well, about half an hour or so. Yeah. yeah, yeah it wasn't like too that. bad, but. And we got a free movie ticket out of it, too. And yeah, we, did. we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, nice we, so bonus. we'll use that for the next. And we got to go back and get our chicken wings that were still fried. We did. And they, and they remembered words. you guys, too. They didn't yeah. eat them or throw them out. So. Yeah. Thank no, God. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to beat some motherfucker down for some chicken wings. Don't fuck with Larry's chicken wings. <laughs> All right, and with that, let's see. I guess the first thing we ought to like talk about, because I mentioned earlier about all these humongous egos, these big personalities in this movie. Like, let's talk about character chemistry because I mean there were a lot of characters in this movie that were meeting each other for the first time we've already seen them but you know like for example you had Tony Stark Iron Man mm -hmm. meeting Doctor Strange for the first time that was my favorite one I think <laughs> yeah that was pretty good yeah. yeah I I you know Benedict Cumberbatch and Downey Jr I mean those two together that's and, and any 
kind of role almost like that's to me that's like a yeah dream. that was beautiful yeah that that's, was amazing that's a dream come true um but as those <laughs> particular <laughs> yeah, exactly so I mean, yeah they're together. pretty similar together and you know they just play off each other so well exactly and that's what i'm saying in those roles in particular you know because strange is you know this ego maniacal you know doctor um Magician. Turned wizard guy. Yeah, yeah, the wizard guy. Yeah, and then of course Stark, you know, being just most egomaniacal guy in the entire MCU. <laughs> you know, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, it felt really natural, and that was the other thing, you know, about all these characters is that I felt like. It was an odd pairing sometimes. Like you wouldn't automatically look on paper and say, "Yeah." Thor, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot. That seems like a perfect trio right <laughs> That's there. That's going to work perfectly. Yeah, you don't necessarily think that, but it did. It did. It did, and the, and then it was great, I thought, how they had... Although his name is Rabbit. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come here, Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, but I, I thought it was great, too, the way uh, Rocket stepped up to kind of... Rabbit. <laughs> it's Rocket. Rabbit. <laughs> Rocket's going to come after you because, you know, he don't like that shit. But Rocket's, uh, you know, he was worried about Thor. You know, he could tell that when that whole bit when he could tell Thor was just like not in the good place, you know, mentally and realized that he, he was going to have to be the captain, be the, be the uh, you know, the voice of reason for him and everything. I thought that was pretty great. Of course, it's always great seeing any of the Guardians characters because yeah, I pretty. love Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Um, so yeah, that was, that was great. Uh, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, the, and again, a little bit <laughs> different in this way, then you had Tony Stark meeting Star-Lord. <laughs> that was pretty good. I mean, Chris Pratt on his own is just... Chris Pratt is great, man. Mm -hmm. I am not a big, actually I'm not a fan at all of the Guardians of the Galaxy storyline or that movie, but... Okay, but... What? But yeah, I don't. I don't. I. But I did you see the it. second one? No. Okay. See, I stopped watching the first one because it was just way too goofy for me. So that's a complaint yeah. a lot of people have, and I think you need to give it another chance. <laughs> Probably. And I, I think you need. Too. I did warm up to some of those guys throughout the entire movie, but yeah, man, I don't know, just not my thing. Yeah, I, I definitely think you should give it another chance. Honestly, I'm not saying that just because I love it, but. I think I love it. You need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll appreciate it more. And the second movie is goofy, but it, it's a little darker. Yeah, uh, it's a it, A lot of characters mature in that movie, and uh, yeah, I, I really suggest you watch it. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, "How the fuck did he watch that before seeing Infinity War?" Well, I mean, speaking of that, and speaking of more character interactions the one movie that and i know people are going to be like why are you even talking about this thing <laughs> that the three of us have not seen yet even now is black, black panther. panther yeah i swear we flacked on that we're one, not really. we're not racist <laughs> it's nothing to do with that because we really we, wanted to see black it. panther is a fucking badass dude. love black panther the whole wakanda scene in that in avengers infinity war is like my favorite part yeah, i think the entire film. all the wakandans they're and they're yeah. great characters i love the black panther comic books over the years i have his first appearance in jungle action back in the 70s i've and all that so i was super excited to see black panther and honestly you know you can say excuses excuses but Right around when that movie was coming out was when we started planning this whole silly ass channel. The uh, got a little busy. Yeah, the <laughs> geeking poetic thing, and we kept saying we got to go see it. We got to go see it, and we never went and saw it. No. But now, this week it came out on video, um, which that is was really fast. Well, kind of. Yeah, a few Most months. Most movies do now. Now it's like a it's month, and they're already. Yeah. Yeah. But it just came out on video, so we will be watching it. I'm sure we'll be talking about it on the podcast or anything, but... We'll make up for it. We're sorry. Yeah. We knew enough about the character and about Wakanda and different factors. And, you know, and if you've seen Civil War, you kind of knew yes. stuff. So we knew enough that I think we felt like, okay, we can, we can probably, you know, deal with it. Um, 
other movies, like I know you didn't see Ant Man, no, and stuff. But it, it's another one that looked too goofy for me. But I'm a huge Paul Rudd fan. You know, it is goofy. It's fucking great though, dude. But I mean, but the nice thing in a way about it is he didn't factor into this damn movie <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah. Again, spoilers. What was he on house arrest or something? Was he master? <coughs> well, yeah, I think He's they Ant-Man. yes, right? How's yeah, he yeah. House arrest. <laughs> they explained it away that. Hawkeye and Ant-Man are not in this film because after the whole uh, Sokovia and Accords thing, they opted to take a deal and just bow out because they didn't. They had families and things that they were concerned about. Uh, I have a feeling that's going to probably turn around in the... They're going to be in, back in the second one. Yeah, in the second. Sure. Yeah, because you know right now... If anybody in Hawkeye's uh, immediate family suddenly turned to dust in his arms, <laughs> he's going to be pissed off. Watch him and, for some arrows. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I love Hawkeye, so I'm really looking forward to uh, Jeremy Renner coming yeah. back. But yeah, I thought there was a lot of uh, positive, of course, Spider-Man, you know, I, I, he was just great. Yeah, he was. I mean, yeah. you know, Spider-Man anymore in the movies it really seems like people are kind of love it or hate it with him. Um, I like him. Yeah, I like this Tom new. Holland. Yeah, the really Tom Holland good. Spider-Man is awesome. That yeah. that Homecoming movie was probably, I'm gonna say, probably my favorite Spider-Man so far. Even though I loved Spider-Man two a lot, right? But man, the Homecoming one was incredible. Yeah, I, I think at this point I'd have to agree that I, I think Homecoming is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie. I, I really liked. The Amazing Spider-Man that came out with uh, what's his nuts? Uh, uh, I forget. His yeah, name. I know. That, You're that dude. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, I from Social Network or whatever he was in. Like I Andrew thought that Garfunkel was really was good. Uh, I think the, who? Andrew Garf- Garfunkel. <laughs> Garfunkel. I don't know. Andrew Garfield. Garfield. <laughs> Garfunkel. <laughs> Mrs. Brill Simon, I guess. Like right? I was just gonna say, like a fucking bridge over troubled water. Um, <laughs> I yeah, no, and Stone, and, and, and that Garfield, guy. yes, that guy. Yeah, and I liked the first one, but anyway, I digress. I the, Tom Holland as Spider Man is great, and uh, and we'll get into more of it about him later. We start talking about the end and everything. Um, I, yeah, I just I was really taken aback at how well everybody interacted. It was everything I could have hoped for. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was. You know, right on. Good for you, Disney. You got that part right. And that iron spider suit that he got? Oh, dude. dude that was yeah. pretty badass. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got to see a lot of that, you know, yeah, seeing him in that suit, seeing uh, seeing Banner in the Hulkbuster suit. That was, I, I thought, you know what, man? This movie, I know a lot of people are complaining that it was a little goofy. I just, yeah, just not a Hulk fan at all. So oh, I thought he was, yeah, dude, I thought he was pretty worthless <laughs> in this film, to be honest with you. He was worthless in this film. He wasn't his worthless. That was his point. Though. I know, but it was just, eh. Yeah, but that was the point, though. I, th- I, I, I hear you, you know, but. I get why. I mean, he's got that Hulk tile dysfunction going on where he can't, you know. <laughs> I understand why he's got that, you know, dilemma or whatever. I just. He can't get his yeah. It just can't get it up. Can't get yeah. It's just he can't he can't get it up, man. Yeah, but I think that that's going to play in big time into the next movie. And I and I yeah. get it because I think that um, they needed to take the Banner character on some sort of in the middle arc, of Infinity you know? War. Well, you know, you pick now. Yeah, I know. Now to have a crisis. Well, but at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like if Hulk would have been around for more of this movie, it would have changed. It would have changed so much because he's ridiculously fucking strong. I mean, he could have taken down, you know, Thanos fucking henchmen and everything. Fucking Crypt Keeper looking yeah, dude. Yeah, Squidward. Yeah, as they call him. Yeah, that's Danny Squid- Filth. That one yeah, brother. Danny Filth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, his whole, like, his whole, yeah, Thanos and his whole, like, black metal posse. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure Hulk would have really, you know, uh, done a number on them. So I I guess for the story arc to go the way it did, I I get the point. But I thought, I just, I love the Hulkbuster armor, so I was excited to see that. You know, I like seeing it. Um, Yeah, I thought it was cool, man. I, I, I... 
I'm I'm very pleased with all that uh, that whole aspect of the film. Yeah. All right. I guess at this point we should probably uh, move on to the next subject, which is the blame game. <laughs> oh my God! So many people. To blame. Where do you even start? <laughs> I mean, and when we talk about blame, I guess we should explain uh, who's to blame in terms of who or who do we blame for Thanos getting as far as he does ultimately because all the way. Yeah, all the way. You know, he he ends up pulling off what he uh, wanted to pull off. And along the way, of course, it's the whole point of the movie, uh, is that they're trying to stop him from getting the next stone or getting a little bit further, getting too strong to the point where they can't stop him. And uh, there's a lot of people to blame. I mean, who would you who would you put a lot of blame on, you know? I put a lot of blame on Gamora. Okay. I mean, she... She knows exactly where the one stone he has no fucking clue is at. That's true. Yeah, that's no that's, clue. That's a valid point. And her sister's being tortured a little bit. She's a freaking robot. <laughs> like, come <Yeah>. on. <laughs> She's mostly robot at this point. I mean, I mean, okay. I get you want to save her. I get it. But why do you tell him the truth and tell him exactly where it's at? You are already willing to give up your whole life. You wanted your boyfriend to kill you <laughs> so he doesn't find this out. And he said, he like pushes one little button or something and she goes, ah! <laughs> and she's always here, here, here. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. You could have lied and gave her time to be put back together and escape. Right. And if you die, so what? You're going to die anyway. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, you know, that's the one thing. Uh, you, I know you saw it, but Vito, you didn't see. And uh, one of the main uh, arcs in Guardians 2 is uh, Gamora and Nebula sort of finally hashing it out between them, you know, literally trying to kill each other at first and then it breaks down into a, a whole w Nebula basically saying, why could you never stick up for me, you know, with Thanos? Why did you, why couldn't you ever just once let me win a battle so that I didn't have to be tortured? You know, and so I, I understand that that was the point. It was that, but but I hear what you're saying too. But, yeah, because they they also had the same common goal of destroying Thanos, not letting him get what he wanted. Yeah, that was their commonality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they really kind of they really kind of made you know Gamora was always so steely and. And just, you know, she had the biggest balls, you know, uh -huh. I didn't know pun intended. I mean, she had, the, she had the biggest balls. She was the gutsiest, I think. Uh -huh. You know, she's a fucking assassin, you know, out of the whole Guardians. I mean, she, she was the toughest one. And they really kind of... They softened her up in this. They did. I was surprised. <laughs> the one, again, the one they really need her to be tough as balls. And they softened her up. <laughs> yeah, and there, and it seemed like there was a lot of that going on. I mean, what about you? Who do you think would you... Star Lord? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they had the gauntlet like literally off his wrist, and that motherfucker just blew it. He lost his temper and got in his face, and he just fucking ended it, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's. You can totally understand why he would react that way, but. I, you know. He could have reacted in a different way that could have ended everything. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't know the character that well. I mean, is he prone to like emotional outbursts? Yes. That's yeah, yeah, he yeah, is. Okay. And so that's why it didn't bother me that much because it was like, oh, go figure. That's why I went, you know, when I was first watched it and I knew they were leading up to that, I was like, don't say anything. Don't say anything about Gamora being dead because that's going to blow everything. And sure as fuck, it did. Um, but I'm f funnily <laughs> enough, though, you're going to put the blame on Star-Lord, and understandably so, but that still kind of goes back to Gamora. See? Fucking Gamora. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Green in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Just let you down every time. Yeah, that's a good point. The green skins in this movie just, you know... But now it sounds like I'm being racist against green skins, so... 
No. Well, Captain Kirk would be very upset with you. <laughs> hey. Oh, don't. Yeah, he's not racist <laughs> against that. In no, Orion Slave Girl. <laughs> That's his shit right there. That's my shit right there. But we'll save that for a whole nother, <laughs> that's, a whole that's a whole other show. <laughs> that's our fan fiction show. Always <laughs> <laughs> get excited but, about um, Star Trek every time. Um, you know, the <laughs> funny thing is the, the, one, uh, the one person that a lot of people put blame on, and I'm, I've seen this a lot online, and I'm kind of surprised that people are falling for it, I guess, because I'm going, really? You didn't? Was Doctor Strange. Because everybody's saying, you know, Doctor Strange, if you wouldn't have gave him that stone to save Tony's life and everything, and I'm going, if you really believe Doctor Strange gave up that stone because it was to save Tony's life, I don't care what he said, that's bullshit. I mean, I, I have, and we'll, we'll get into theories about where it's going to go later, but I have uh, pretty good reason to believe that, that was he did that because... It's going to factor. Yeah, he knows the he future. Knows. And so him That's doing the one that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of people, a lot of people online are bitching about it. A lot of people are just in everywhere. Even people I've talked to personally saying, oh, you know, I can't believe it. I'm going, really? Man, like, you know, Dr. Strange pushed out and I'm like, yeah, well, this is one thing yeah. Dr. Strange don't do is he doesn't push out. And he literally yeah. just met Tony like, what, a couple days ago? Well, and then there was that whole scene where he explicitly yeah, told yeah. Tony... I will not give up this, the right. the I Vagamoto to save yours or Parker's life. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I don't. I, you know, I'm. I know they tried to play it like he had a change of heart. You know, because he couldn't stand. Like to he see. softened also. Yeah, like he softened <laughs> also. Ones. But I, I don't. I, I don't, don't buy it. I don't. I don't buy that either. Um. I mean, what about? What about, you know, a big thing that I, I would put a little bit of blame on, a little bit, was uh, Wanda and Vision. Yes. Because they knew early on in the story, they knew that he was coming for that stone. And they played that whole angle of, like, would Cap say about, you know, not not one life is, you know, worth... We don't trade lives. We don't trade lives. lives. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, he's a fucking android. <laughs> you know, I get that they're attached <laughs> to him. To <laughs> I get. I get that they're like attached to him, and they don't want it. But my. But my. Here is my thought. Like, get rid of the fucking stone, and then like, and. And defeat Thanos, and then let's fucking worry about bringing bringing Vision back to life. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. especially he once they listen to Vision because that's what he wanted. Yeah, yeah, and I mean Vision because you know he's incredibly smart, obviously, because he's like this weird like celestial robot essentially. Um, but you know, I get it. We had to have the romantic arc. There had to be the romantic arc yeah. in the movie and everything. And I get it. And I love Scarlet Witch. She's and, a badass dude. Well, she's awesome. And the, come on. That's the funny thing about it too is that one thing they do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the MCU that they do in there that bothers me as a comic book fan is you know they've changed um, the levels of power and superiority uh, compared to the way they are in the comic books. And Scarlet Witch in the comic books is fucking strong, like powers wise. Mm -hmm. Like she can do some shit, dude. I mean, at one point she wiped out basically the whole mutant population mm -hmm. by just saying no more mutants. Really? And like, oh, yeah, wow. she kind of pulled almost like a, like a Thanos, Thanos. kind of thing. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, she didn't mean for it to happen quite the way it happened and everything, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Sorry if I'm God, spoiling yes. anything at that point. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, Wanda is like incredibly strong and they kind of showed that and they made a play on that and too when she finally does come down and she fights off those machines. And, yeah, uh, just and, slaughters uh, that whole and, and dog they, race and, and, and the and field. Like, where the fuck is she? And, yeah, <laughs> the Wakandans are sitting there, are sitting there going, why the hell is she not helping us this whole time? Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, she's... She should have been if she killed Vision in the first place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, because unfortunately, they took so long to get to that point that they allowed it so that, uh, you know, 
what's his nuts had the time stone by that point and he could turn back time you know like mm -hmm. share and shit <laughs> if, he, if he could turn back time yeah i mean it's it, <laughs> sorry but uh i was listening to share today actually but anyway. anyway um so you know to me that was like and i get it it's a movie trope they needed it to happen that way i i get it but to me I feel like they should have acted a little bit more quickly and, you know, that I understand. could have been avoided. It, it, a lot, of, yeah, that could have been avoided. They could have hit it and nobody would ever find yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, I, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, it's easy to put blame on, on a lot of the characters, but, I mean, there really isn't anybody else to blame other than fucking Thanos, you know, because... No Thanos, no movie. And it's interesting to me, you know, one thing I want to bring up while we're on the subject of Thanos is it's really interesting how many of you out there are taking the stance that you don't think Thanos is really that much of a bad guy. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I understand their way of thinking. I understand where they're coming from with that because they're trying to say, you know... Well, you know, he's, he's he, trying to do good for he the world. He was trying, his motivation was actually to do good, and it's not like he's just some crazy psychopath that's just out, like, hacking and slashing through people. Let me make sure I got his, his motivation right. He just thinks that the universe is being overpopulated and it's going to destroy everybody? Well, what it is, like, when he explains about his home world and when he explains about, like, Gamora's home world is that a lot of these planets, a lot of these places get overpopulated and they wind up, Depleting their resources. Depleting their resources and basically crumbling and people starve to death and the planet goes to completely to shit. Just like Thanos mm -hmm. did. So his rationale is if I have this means to uh, just randomly, because he said it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, just, ra you know, there is no choosing of mm -hmm. people. Just randomly snap your fingers and get rid of half the people and then, you know, now... Uh, civilizations get a chance to thrive again and all this kind of stuff um, and there's a lot of people that are looking at that going well that kind of makes sense and blah 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 and he just doesn't see him you know and he actually get, blah 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 <laughs> dude the <laughs> universe is astronomically large enough <laughs> that you could literally <laughs> displace your civilization over countless worlds and start anew or use your fucking reality stone to make everybody believe that they're not hungry anymore. Or, or, so, there's, or uh, there's, make more resources. Right. There's all sorts of ways to do it besides just fucking randomly Murder. killing, murdering <laughs> half the universe. Besides the fact that I don't want to give any history lessons here, folks, or anything, but <laughs> we've had things like this happen <laughs> in the past uh, where some guy says, well, I want to obliterate these people and stuff, blah, 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 because it's going to be for the, the greater good of these other people and everything, and then they'll prosper more and everything, and it's just, it's humane. Come on, guys. And furthermore, my point about Thanos, when people sit there and say, well, he's not that bad, and he blah, 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 blah. I have one thing to say that disproves that. I, just enough to me. Other people may not agree. I have one word, nebula. Because yeah. there is no way to excuse him for what he did to her, you know? Yeah. I mean, I understand, you know, you can look at, you know, yeah, he put Gamora through hell and all this stuff too, but, but ultimately... But not like Nebula. But Nebula, he tortures her. It's, he places parts of her. And and he tortures her. And I and you get the impression that it's like, in as, in as much as he loves Gamora and went extra easy on her in some ways because he was partial to towards her as a daughter. You get the impression that uh, Nebula was kind of the redheaded stepchild, so to speak, yeah. you know, that got, you know, He's it's like when daddy boy. came home drunk from, and had a bad day, <laughs> Nebula is the one that, that had to suffer his, his fist, Brown. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't. I don't care what you want to say about anything else. But this guy does or doesn't do. I mean, if I found that out about Captain America, I'd be like, "Well, fuck, fuck that, that guy." Dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I people, you could think whatever you want. I'm sure you know. Make sure you make comments down below if you want to try to 
sway my opinion. I am totally open to hearing other sides, but I'm not buying it. I think that Thanos is a piece of shit. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. He's, he is a bad guy. He may not be your typical maniacal bad guy kind of thing, you know, where it's just so easy to hate him. When you see your bad guy behaving like this, where he's like, you know, it's not that he wants to rule the world. He wants to do what he's got to do and then go retire to a farm and just like live out the rest of his days in peace. And you sit there and go, oh, okay. So much easier to hate him when he's, you know, just this fucking lunatic. Mm -hmm. He is a lunatic. Literally, he is. I mean, he wiped out literally half of the entire fucking universe. Yeah. yeah and his motivation was fucking weak, man. Yeah. Do I, something else. You don't have to wipe everybody <laughs> out. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I know. Go ahead and eat their Gamora. Over yeah. 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 Well, you know, that yeah, the, the, the ultimate sacrifice, oh, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I, yeah. Not buying it, folks. No. Uh, Thanos is as bad as it gets, you know. He's... Uh, He's you probably know. the worst. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. he's fucking terrible. So the one that gets to you and makes you think he's good, yeah. but he's not. Mm -mm. Yeah, fuck he's that. He's a sneaky big, little weasel. Grape ape looking motherfucker. <laughs> you hear that, Thanos? <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> come back, come get us. Josh Brolin was awesome in the role. Josh Brolin was great. Yeah, I've got the the total. whole face mapping thing they did was like incredible. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So Josh Brolin. Dude, you did down. awesome, man. Your character though, fuck, <laughs> fuck your character. You. <laughs> Guy's a piece of shit, but you, dude, you good rock. fucking job. All right, well, then all of that said the end of the movie or the whole end carnage. of the movie. Yeah, the carnage, <laughs> uh, the uh, all the shit Thanos did, uh, as we already, yeah, as we <laughs> let as we let it be known earlier. Um, Thanos uh, snaps his fingers once he's got the gauntlet on with all the stones and half the universe disappears, man, literally uh, in front of each other's uh, faces. And it's, what'd you think of that? So I wasn't as emotionally taken aback by that because I know for sure most of these people are back in more movies coming up. So obviously either they're not really dead or they're going to be back in some kind of form, right? Right. And um, the one the one death that I was like, ooh, that's kind of bad, was the Spider-Man one. Yeah. That one was pretty... Yeah, and that yeah. one, that one, oddly enough, because I, again, I totally spoiled the ending for me. I read all the deaths uh, before I saw the movie. And that one, I didn't think was going to affect me as bad. And it affected me worse when I saw it the second time. And I think because I wasn't, even though I read that he died, I wasn't expecting it to be as emotional as it was. Mm -hmm. So it kind of caught me off guard when I saw it the first time. And if this makes any sense, seeing it the second time, knowing it was coming, like, it totally choked me up. It got me, like, it got me really, like, I was like, oh, that sucks. And, and again, it's, folks, I think it's good storytelling when and good acting and everything when it gets me choked up when I know damn well that motherfucker ain't dead. Got another movie coming. He's got another movie coming out, you know? And they can't really make it like, oh, well, it's going to be a prequel. You know, it ain't. It can't be. There's no way it can be. It wouldn't even make sense. Yeah. It can be like a toddler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing doing jack shit because motherfucker wasn't, wasn't, yeah. wasn't Spider-Man. Yeah. So, you know... I, and yeah, and I think that that's the thing. And I've seen a lot of people kind of saying that and rolling their eyes too. Going and a walk. couple people die like multiple times before that ending scene anyway. So to right. me, they kind of cheated it a little bit. Right. And I mean, well, we could kind of talk about that a little bit too because uh, we were going to get into that. But let's talk about this here. I mean, is there anybody that died in this movie that you don't? think is going to come back because like I said I think we all know most or all of the Guardians are coming back they've got another movie at, at least another movie coming out uh, you know we we know that uh, Spider-Man is coming back we know odds are that I mean we know Black fucking Panther is coming back Black Panther they're not killing is that like, they're cow. not kill I mean that movie is so like number one in the world well now it's not but at but the time it was, it was super successful there's there's no way 
even if they had originally said, ah, fine, we'll do a one and done with him or whatever, you better believe the executives now are like, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta re-edit this or something because we are not killing off Black Panther. That was so successful and, and, and rightfully so, you know, I, I, it, he's a great character and he's acted, he's portrayed rather, uh, wonderfully. So I don't want to see him go and I don't think he is gone, but what about some of the other characters? I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm kind of wondering if Loki is coming back. I hope not. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm He's not, I'm not a big something. Loki fan and I'm not oh. a big Thor fan. So oh. to me, I could give a shit less, oh. you know? Man, come on. I don't think Falcon's going to come back. Oh, I unless he's got—I don't think he has his own movie, right, coming out. No, but but he, he really plays a, done a lot with him, have they? He's only been in a couple movies. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. He plays a part in the Ant Man universe, though, doesn't he? In those movies. Yeah. Yeah. And I—I I don't know. I don't. I don't see. I mean, I'm not basing it so much on whether they're a smaller or bigger character. I'm more basing it on the how and when they died, because I'm thinking that the people that died at the end of the film due to the gauntlet snap, you know. I'm thinking, especially if you've read the comic books, you know that they're not exactly dead. They're kind of almost in like a shadow. Oh, realm. okay. Spirit realm. I think I heard about where the soul stone, like, yeah, it puts it kind you of in saves that. saves them in a I way, gotcha. yeah. They're, they're sort of absorbed into that. But, you know, somebody like Loki that was just murdered, that you was know. a pre-gauntlet pre death. Pre yeah. yeah, you know, more or less. Um, I think like him, I think, uh, you know, uh, Idris uh, Elba's character. Uh, uh, Heim Heimdall? Heimdall, yeah, yeah. He, he uh, I don't think he's going to come back. I'm kind of wondering if, it makes me wonder, on the same note when I'm saying, who do you think is going to come back? Also, who do you think is going to come back that might bite the dust, so to speak, in the next movie? Because I have a theory that some of the big characters who are alive now are going to sacrifice themselves for good. Uh, I mean, and one of the ones that I think might not, I, he'll be back, but I don't think he's going to survive past Avengers 4, is Thor. I think Thor might bite it because he has nothing else anymore. I mean, Asgard's gone. It's fucking yeah. gone. His like, whole family's gone. He have His hair whole son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and What's as we left? know, that is fucking important, man. He's got half his eyesight. I mean, the yeah. dude's fucked <laughs> right? up, right? Well, he did get that fucking <laughs> groovy eyeball from Rocket, you know. Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I think if anybody would potentially sacrifice themselves for the greater good of of the universe, it could be Thor. Oh yeah, because I, I don't, I don't see where else they're gonna go with him. Really, you know, I mean, he can go have sex with a bunch of chicks and like try to make a new Asgard. I don't think it works that way, you know. Yeah, but if he if he mates with a human, is that offspring like a half breed? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but I, 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 like I don't. Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> like, does he only get half the powers or something? Yeah, or? I don't know. But uh, half the calories. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't see where they're gonna go with him. And I think if they were gonna make a huge sacrifice of somebody, I could definitely see him being it. Hate to say it, I could see, possibly, I could see Cap. Sacrificing himself because he's the kind he, of guy that he would, would. Yeah, he would do sure. that, and he's had quite an arc, you know. Yeah, yeah he was. I exactly, love Cap, man. Yeah. I do too. Those movies are my favorite. I think oh I don't yeah, I don't want to give anything away because I know we're going to do an episode where we talk about our favorite superhero movies and and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, let's just say at least one of the Captain America movies is right at the top for me, <laughs> man, or, or right up there because Cap, yeah. Chris Evans is just so fucking great. Yeah, dude. 
he, I, and you know, I, he's another one I was skeptical of when I first, I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh my God. He Captain played America. Johnny, um. He played Johnny Blaze. Yeah. 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 Uh, not or Human Storm. Torch. Johnny Storm, Johnny, Storm, Storm, Johnny yeah. Blaze. Yeah. <laughs> Different hero. Um, anyway, he played Johnny Storm. Uh, yeah. And he was okay as that, you know, but I'm going to be really choked up if I see, it's going to be hard to see any of those old heroes go. But I, I think I could see him going. I know there's been a lot of speculation that Iron Man is going to bite it. I but, thought for sure he was going to bite it. Yeah, at this he's one I, I right. thought for sure it was going to be gone. Yeah. I, I don't know now. I think he's going to see it to the end. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really hope they don't. I understand why they would do it this way because these guys have been under contract for so mm-hmm. long and they probably don't want to do it anymore. You know, they got to be exhausted. I know Chris Hemsworth didn't want to play that Thor character like they did in the first two, right? They had to switch him for Ragnarok or something because he didn't like how the character was was going. Oh, was it? Okay, I didn't know that. I thought that's a... uh, It would make sense because it it took a very different turn. Yeah, he took a very different turn. He's probably the one that wanted the fucking haircut. (laughs) I love Chris Hemsworth, though. But, I mean, I'm just saying I could see them saying, all right, Cap, oops, Cap... (laughs) And uh, Iron Man and Thor have all been, notes, have all been... Uh, it's important. Yeah, it is important. <laughs> have all been around long enough, you know, it's time, you know, let's have them make the ultimate sacrifice and then we'll get new Avengers and all that kind of stuff. I would totally understand them doing that. Mm-hmm. It would totally make sense. I really hope it isn't what they do. Um, even if there are no more Iron Man movies, even if there are no more Captain America movies, I, I, I just, it's going to really suck if they just flat out kill off all those characters. I don't know. I won't make a judgment. Just like, you know, I tried not to make a judgment about Infinity War Part 1. I expected not to like it, and I actually did like it. Um, and I'm hoping I'll like the second one, but yeah, we'll see. So, um, and with that, then of course, the movie's over. Everybody is dust. Um, <laughs> and then we get to the after credit scene with Samuel Jackson finally getting to say, motherfucker. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost, almost, which was, I mean, it was great. It was even funnier when I thought it that was, they didn't yeah, like, yeah, get yeah, to yeah. say it. Yeah, because he turns to dust before you can before he finishes his thought, and you see that he was trying to make contact with somebody with that that symbol and everything. Do you know who that is? Now I do. Yeah, but you didn't. After yeah, leaning over in the movie, go, Larry, who the fuck is this Captain America wannabe that he just texted? Oh here? no no no! <laughs> There's like no dude. That's, that's Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, dude. Who's Captain Marvel? Captain Dude, Marvel. Captain Marvel. Where the fuck has he been? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see like what they do with it. But he's. Uh, it, it, did you notice that the symbol? Mm, I don't know how much you're going to remember this. Do you remember the Nova Corps from the first Guardians movie? That. Uh, John C. Riley's character, he was like the space police guy. If Remember it happened that? after the first 20 minutes, then no. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's when I stopped watching that movie. When yeah, Star-Lord was dancing to some kind of disco shit at that planet, I was like, I'm done, bro. I'm not watching this anymore. Dude. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. We are- <laughs> I am telling yeah. you, right, I'm making a vow. You, you are going watch to watch it. both movies with us. You're going to have to give it another chance. But the, uh, I, I will, because that Nebula character was, I thought was pretty cool. So i got to oh, find yeah. out who, who she's, you know, what yeah, she's all Nebula, about, so. yeah, well. And Gamora's cool until she fucks up. Well, I mean, come on, man. You got, you got uh, Star-Lord, who's just, Chris is just the greatest. You know, he's such a great actor. You've got Gamora, who is Uhura, from the Star Trek, mm-hmm. the new Star Trek series, yes. and then and then you've got Nebula, who is fucking Amy Pond, from Doctor fucking Who. Doctor Who, which we will be talking about. Wait, is she the redhead? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bro, I didn't know that, <laughs> dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. See? Yeah, you're in. Oh, now. yeah, now I am. Give it another shot. Yeah, she is hot as fuck, in dude. That yeah, and Who. she's and she's and she's just great. I think Karen Gillan is such a great actress, man. Mm-hmm. I, she's funny. 
but she could be really intense, but then then turn around and be like hilarious right afterwards. Yeah, she's actually one I thought was gonna die in this movie because her career is taking off. Yeah. Yeah. And I was very wrong. After especially after reading some of the comments, like, oh, I think <laughs> right, yeah. we'll, get, in, right we'll get into that in a minute. But it, that's a good point to bring up. But uh I yeah. know that's why I said it. Yeah, I know. Okay. I heard you. I heard that <laughs> shit. But anyway, yeah, you need to watch. We're gonna we're gonna do a follow up. We're gonna do a mini sewed follow up about Vito's fair take. On, I'll give it a fair shake. On the, I promise. On the Guardians uh, series and everything, and then we'll talk about that. But anyway, so yes, the after credit scene. It was a teaser of sorts that coming out in I believe it's March of next year, a couple months before Avengers Four is the Captain Marvel movie, which is going to be uh, performed by, uh, portrayed by Brie Larson, yeah. Who is, she's a great actress, been mm -hmm. in all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's too much, they'll take too long if I try and explain to them. I'll get them up to speed on who Captain Marvel is, mm -hmm. but safe to say Captain Marvel was one of my favorite characters growing up, uh, when it was Marvel, when Captain Marvel was a he at first. Then later, the power went to uh, Carol Danvers. Yeah, is that her name, Carol Danvers? It's been a minute. Um, but And became the female. There have been various uh, incarnations of Captain Marvel. but It's like a Marvel. Green Lantern type of deal? Or? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and uh, and but very powerful. Okay. So that's why it's like, oh, oh yeah, okay. And, you know, especially because I was going to say in conjunction with the Guardians Part 1 mm -hmm. thing, with the uh, the first stone that they you don't end up actually seeing Thanos get it. You just hear he mentions about how he destroyed uh, Xandar to get that first stone. And that was the uh, where the Nova Corps were and all that stuff with uh, John C. Riley and mm -hmm. Glenn Close and all that. And... Uh, yeah, that's like her, kind of. Well, that's sort of where the, the Marvel power sort of comes from. It's way too complicated <laughs> to get into it. But anyway, uh, Captain Marvel's going to fuck Thanos up, man. And it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm really excited if you can't tell. You know, I'm very much looking forward to uh, uh, Captain Marvel. I think it's awesome that they're going to do the female Captain Marvel. I think that's going to be so awesome. And if they do it right, which I think they will... It's going to be such a good role model for girls, for young girls. We have so many more females that are into superheroes now because it's not as, it's still somewhat, but it's not as chauvinistic as it once was. And things like Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman movie and, uh, you know, Guardians, Gamora, like all these different, get Black Widow, mm -hmm. who's going to be having her own movie coming out nice. uh, pretty soon. Finally, yeah, that should have been... Planned way early on. Scarlett Johansson, how do you not give her a yeah. freaking movie? Exactly, Come on. exactly. <laughs> it's gonna sell. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. People are gonna go see it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think Captain Marvel is gonna be just wonderful if they do it right, man. You're gonna see a lot of girls and little girls in Captain Marvel costumes for Halloween, and that will be kick ass. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it with the after credit scene, and and. Uh, that got me excited, so, you know, and it left you guys kind of going, what the what? fuck was yeah. that? But <laughs> either way, it's a good reaction, you know, because it, at least it kind of leaves you hanging, like, because the end of that movie made you just sort of go, what the fuck? <laughs> we need something optimistic to look forward to. Yeah, we need something. We got to know there's a hero out there, you we know. We need a hero, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> gonna Is that get the all, theme song she's going to have? Get all, get all Footloose soundtrack on us and shit. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they even mentioned, they even mentioned Footloose in that movie. Yeah, they, they, they do, yeah, yeah. 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 And Kevin Bacon and all that. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And Aliens, that was a good Aliens reference. Oh, I knew oh, you were yeah. going to be Dude. excited about the Aliens reference, you know. Oh, we know there. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yep. Well, you would have been it. excited about the Star Wars reference in... Um, well, they're always what? referencing Star Wars in the MCU. There's been tons of Star Wars references and stuff. Civil War, when he's yeah, uh, yeah, bringing yeah. down Ant-Man. Yeah, that old movie, yeah. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah. There All goes right. that chair. Yeah, you and your squeaky Jesus, chair. Jesus, man. Yeah. I'm not farting. That's just this chair. <laughs> Wally chair. <just, laughs> Vito's going to disappear out of frame in a second because it's the chair collapse. So, I mean, I think we'll end this on talking about one last 
topic, which is uh, a lot of fans' uh, favorite thing to do, is theories. Theories about what we can expect in Avengers 4. Uh, we got, we got a few that we wrote down in here. You know, again, I know you guys don't read the comics and, and you didn't read Infinity Gauntlet, which a lot of this was based on. Mm -hmm. um, but in the comic book, uh, Nebula ends up getting her hands on the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. and Reversing everything. Yeah, really? and then a lot of yeah. chaos ensues. What do you think about the likelihood of that? Do you think they're going to take a character like Nebula and make her that major? It is... A Awfully huge jump for her in the series, but I don't know. But I mean, they've kept her around. This I mean, long. Yeah, that's true. Gamora, I guess, did save her for a reason. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, and she does it, and they sometimes stay true to the comics, so maybe they'll stick with it this time. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna twist it, and you she'll, know. she'll what become a, a good draw. Because it yeah. looked like the gauntlet was destroyed, though, right? Once he snapped his fingers, it looked no, like it all burnt. No, it's and... not destroyed. It's it just got a little, uh, yeah, it was just a little, like, extra crispy, not original recipe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, another theory is that um, Iron Man, that, that this was like a dream. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, because in the beginning, he was, like, talking up all about his dream, about having the kid and stuff like that. And yeah. it wasn't the other movie where he, like, pictured, dreamed everybody was Well, that was when him, Scarlet or? Witch, like, you know, mystified him and all that stuff, and he saw the Avengers all laying dead and all that stuff. And he mentions multiple times throughout the movie about Thanos being in his head and just constantly in his head, and yeah, could this all just yeah, be Yeah, it some... just seemed like very Iron Man-centric, the whole Well, the whole thing. MCU has been Iron Man-centric, you know, so it... Whole damn thing it, could be in his head. Well, I was just going to say, so it could stand to reason that, they, but I really hope they don't fucking say it elsewhere. Else. I was just going to yeah. say it, yeah. You know, I mean, that worked for fucking saying elsewhere, I guess. <laughs> don't do it again. But, We've been there, done that. You know, and... Well, this is a younger generation who probably doesn't even know what that is, so no, they might trick I them. I don't know. Look it up. Yeah, just look it up. The whole trope of, uh, you know, it was all a dream, you know, it was very... Uh, uh, primetime soap opera. Roseanne did that too. Yeah, anything? right, exactly. Yeah. I, 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 we can do better than that. So I really hope that isn't yeah. it. Um, uh, then there's another theory that I saw a lot of people talking about. I'm not so sure about this one either, about that basically the last half or so of the movie was that Thanos was dreaming it mm. because with the whole thing with the... Uh, when he giving up Gamora, giving up Gamora and all this stuff, and then he kind of wakes up in that water. And he has a stone and all that, and a lot of people are saying maybe that's the splice. Uh, that that wasn't his one true thing he loved. Right. So yeah. He didn't really mm. earn the stone. I don't know. I I I I could see why people would think it. That's very vanilla sky of them to do. I don't know if you've ever, <laughs> ever seen that movie. No. Oh. I'll be making you guys watch that <laughs> right at some point. Yeah, yeah. That's but I can understand the thought behind that, but I'm a little skeptical on that. I don't know about you guys. That seems pretty lame ending to Yeah, the dream I that just seems like a totally lame thing. I mean, Doctor Strange said there is one outcome out of the million where we actually win. So I'm thinking, what if in the next one they start the movie in this other dimension or reality where they did win. Well, yeah, that was the thing, the whole alternate universe thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Maybe Just somehow... Like fringe where... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that could happen. That That's a possibility. Um, I mean... <laughs> He's like, I've read the comics, none of this shit's happening. <laughs> well, but I don't... But they've already changed so much. Yeah, we don't know what he knows. I mean, they've already... They've changed so much and they can twist things around. I mean, and then you've... The one... The one... Uh, movie uh you know typical thing whatever they do that that makes things really tricky is when things get timey-wimey as the doctor mm -hmm. would yeah. say and you know having that time the stone that controls time and everything that is probably the most likely way just like we're saying like nebula can use the the time stone or somebody can get their hands on it i think that it could be more likely a turning back time sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I think there's even a limitation on what all they can even do with that. I, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, even having read the comics, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with it because there's certain things that happen in the comics that I don't think can happen now because they went a different route. And there's, mm. and there, and there's different characters than there are in the comics. <clears throat> People that were involved more heavily in the comics are not even in this and, and vice versa. Ones that were more involved in this were not in the comics. So okay. I don't know. Uh, we would definitely love to hear more of your theories out there, you know, so make sure you leave us comments either on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. comments, you know, we read them all. Uh, and we'd really love to know because uh, I love this shit. I look it up. You know, I like watching all the various looper videos mm -hmm. and things like that to go, you know, various theories on where this is going. I love that stuff. Oh, yeah. So if people have more theories on it, man, share it with us and uh, we'll talk about it. Let's just real quick give a summary of your, your thoughts and feelings. And I think it's pretty obvious we're all thumbing it up, but... Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I wish that they didn't have people die multiple times before that big ending. To me, that cheats the ending. Doesn't make it as emotionally impactful. Like if, well, what they should have done is if this was the very, very last MCU movie in this timeline and these guys died at the end, I think that would have been great. But knowing that these guys are coming back in other movies, it kind of cheapens that that ending to me. Yeah, right? and that's been a lot of people's complaint. But like I said, I think uh, I could easily see myself taking that stance that you have, but I'm going to wait and see what happens in four. Mm -hmm. My opinion on that is going to depend on what happens in yeah. four. Because I really do think <clears throat> that there are going to be, some deaths are going to stay dead. You know, they're just going to stay permanent. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I think there's going to be new deaths, whether we like it or not. Yeah. You know, I think there's going to be new deaths, and then I think those are going to be... Permanent. And very impactful, you know. I think that's when you're going to get that real impact, you know. Mm -hmm. There may not be as many deaths, but they're going to be, to us, more important. I, that's just my theory. Yeah. What about you? What's your final thoughts? Um, overall, again, I like it. Thumbs up. Uh my one complaint was I love Doctor Strange, but I felt like when he was like doing his whole thing, I, he felt cheesy to me. Out, out of all the characters and stuff, I, in his own movie, he didn't, I didn't get that. In this one, he seemed very cheesy compared to everybody else. I want when to... Like, I <laughs> that, yeah, when he's yeah, shaking that was his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I, I, mean, yeah. the, I don't know. All his magical... I don't know. It, it took me out of it for a moment. I, I want to argue with you about that, but I can't. Because I admit there was a couple times I thought it came off a little corny. Yeah. Scarlet kind of Witch I thought was a little bit more cornier yeah. with her hand movements and stuff like that. But. It's, it's a, that's a tough... It's just a tough role to play, I think. Yeah. I mean, the, because... Yeah, how cool can you be doing when this? Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> when you're doing all the hand movements. and I, yeah. yeah, I agree. I, I, but I... but I, Yeah, I hear you. It was a little silly and everything, but I don't know. I think that... His Dr. powers are fucking I was just badass, I was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Doctor Strange. I love Benedict. And I finally did watch the movie, and dude, it was awesome. Oh, you did oh, watch, yeah, yeah, watch yeah. it? Good. Yeah. Dude, Good. it was awesome. So I was gonna, cool. I was gonna tell you when you were home all this time. I was gonna say, catch up on some of these movies. Um, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's. I love that movie. You know, especially when he's with the Dormammu thing going over and over yeah, yeah. and over again. <laughs> the and only just... time annoying somebody actually worked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna annoy you until you do what I want. Yep, exactly. You know, but um, yeah. I mean, I obviously. Surprise, surprise. I give this a big thumbs up. I love the movie overall. I My only complaint, since we're kind of airing out our little things, my only complaint <laughs> is I think there were times when certain things could have been explained away a little bit better and more conveniently, you know, because there were certain things that took me out of it. Um I agree with you about the Star Lord thing with him blowing it. I felt like I was like, oh, that's so obvious, you know, like 
you know, I, I just felt like they, and, and in that Star-Lord scene when they've got, when Mantis has uh, Thanos under her power and they've got their hands, they could do anything to him at that mm -hmm. point. Why didn't they cut his fucking head off? Right. Why didn't they just take Strange could open guns? that portal, then right? The and then, yeah. He could have done, yeah. He could have taken, yeah, he could have opened the portal. They could have, they could have done so many things there. And instead they were just, you know, and they waited all that time, you know, just being like, Star-Lord, don't do it, don't do it. And I, I was like, oh, that was the only, one of the only times in the movie where I felt like a particular um, device, plot device was just so like, oh, ham-fisted, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, come on, you know, like they could have, and even I had somebody else say to me, it was like, well, maybe it's because even having him under Mantis spell, he was so strong as it was, you know, and everything in that gauntlet was already so powerful that any kind of blow, like if they would have tried to blow his head off, the gauntlet would have almost just as quickly repaired him mm -hmm. or would have saved his life or something. Okay, and but if that's the case, they could have explained that. They could have, they could said have tried that. it and they found could, out. They could yeah. have said that when when Star Lord when they were saying Star Lord, don't you know, don't don't you know, blah blah blah. We're almost there. He could have been like, I should just blow a hole in his fucking head right now. And Strange could have been like, No, it won't work. He's the, the gauntlet yeah. it was too powerful. Then okay, but. You know, I guess we're just supposed to assume that, but it was little things like that, which I know are just super nerdy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is geeking poetic, but um, <laughs> there's, there's just little things like that that I was kind of put off about. Other than that, oh, one last thing that I, uh, one last little device that I'm not enjoying at all. Why are they making Pepper so lame? <laughs> they made her so lame. You know, she shouldn't have even been in this movie. She seems. calling up Tony, you know, like if you don't get back could, here, we're through. Or yeah, something, let's if see. if you don't get back here, it's like, you know are you fucking doing. serious? <laughs> like, oh God forbid, he's trying to save the fucking world. You can turn the TV on. You know what's going on. <laughs> You can see that there's like oh, spaceships and all this other shit. It's like, Tony, I know you're one of the only people on this planet who could possibly stop this, <laughs> but I'm not having it. <laughs> Fuck you. Like they they made, they. that's just so lame. I just really wish, I would have even bought into it more if it was her like being like, I totally understand you have to do this, but I can't emotionally handle it yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, kind of playing it up like the typical like, bitchy, High school girlfriend scolding or wife right? girlfriend that's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, don't you dare, Mister, I'm locking you out. And like, oh, man. <laughs> like, sleeping in your yeah, you're, yeah, you're and sleeping it's a shame because I, because I, and you know, I in general I like the character of Pepper and I like Peltro. I like I, you know, could be cool. I liked her in previous stuff, but. um yeah, I, I that that was so that was a minor gripe, but not yeah. enough to make me, you know, Thankfully have a major problem, a huh? Thankfully, she wasn't in there a whole right, lot. Right, I know, but it, but it almost just kind of felt pointless. I was like, you know, it was just one more thing to make Tony feel like shit for who he is or whatever, you know. Like, a guy acts like an asshole and she bitches at him that you're a fucking selfish asshole. Then he goes and sacrifices everything to go and save the fucking universe, and you're a selfish asshole. It's like. Come on, man. That was a stupid device. But other than that, I don't really have any other complaints about the movie. Um, you know, I I highly recommend people watch it. Definitely. Yeah. Other than the bad guy winning, but... Well, you know, you got to keep it interesting. And I thought that it was a nice change. The whole tone of the movie at the end was just so not the typical... Oh, God, no. Epic ending, you right. know, it was it so It was epic, like, but... Yeah, it was an epic downer, you know. Kind of and one more question I want to ask is how, for some of you out there that have kids, young kids that are probably way into the Marvel Universe and everything, did you take your kids to see this movie? And if you did, how did they react Shame to on it? you. <laughs> no, but seriously, especially, especially if you didn't know what to expect. If you didn't know what to expect. But I'm very curious to know... How did kids react to this? Because my thought at the end of it is I was like, 
if I saw this, because when I was a kid, I just, you know, superheroes were everything to me, you know? And if I would have been eight years old and I saw that ending and, I, and it ended like that, I would have <laughs> been fucking traumatized. I guess kids are more resilient nowadays than, than my type, you know? But I, it would have traumatized me watching, you know, Spider-Man. Yeah, that you know? was... And seeing Spider-Man die like that and everything... Like holy shit, that would have really bothered me. I uh, I would have had to have had a long talking to afterwards of like you know, he's probably okay. Larry would still be in therapy today I, for that yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Instead, I'm you know I need therapy for the way my mother dressed me up as the Incredible Hulk when I was in first grade. <laughs> wait this for it, gold. guys. Wait for it. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> We'll tell that story about the bio. We'll tell the story behind that picture some other time when we have more time. All right. Well, on that note, then, uh, yeah, I say we put this baby to bed. Yeah. I think that's the end of our first movie review discussion. We hope everybody enjoyed uh, listening to us talk about it. Well, we'll be back soon. We're going to have, right? We're gonna do, oh, yeah. We're going to keep doing this. We'll have more stuff coming up. We're going to have more podcasts. Uh, Goofy more. videos that we like to do. <laughs> yeah, as you've seen our videos. <laughs> Our little teasers and stuff. We're going to do more movie reviews and uh, various mini-sodes. And, uh, yeah, we got a few cool things. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have it back uh, pretty soon. We'll be back in a snap. No way! No way!